Hey everyone, what is going on? So today, what we're we doing? Well, today we're taking a look at the Eleven Doctor set. I'm only reviewing the classic figures, as uh, the new series figures I, uh, I will be reviewing other times when I do reviews of the uh, base fig standalone figures on their own. Uh, so today we are looking at the uh, eight Doctors that were classic from the set. This may be a two-part video, I'm not too sure, but let's go straight into it. So we'll start with the first Doctor, so I'll move the rest of these. To begin with, uh, this first Doctor figure is based off three Doctors. Closer. And uh, is a very, very nice figure. Uh, the articulation is standard. The head can turn, the arms can turn, the elbows can move, and there is bicep articulation. There is a T-crotch joint that's hindered by his coat, though. Uh, thigh, knee, and no foot. It just wouldn't have worked for these figures. Uh, he does have one accessory which we'll go over, which is his cane, which really should be brown, but they've gone for a black, uh, probably just for San Diego Comic Con reasons uh, for the time. Uh, this set is quite old now, there's, there's even a sequel to it, as a lot of you will know. So the so the detail, well we'll start with the face. Uh, uh, the, sculpt, the face is very nicely done. Uh, the sculpt of William Hartnell is probably one of the best Doctor sculpts there is, probably second to uh, Peter Davison. Uh, the reds around the eyes really do... Uh, start pick out the features and uh, the grey eyebrows as well with all the creases and whatnot. The hair is nicely done with it, it's just a plain white wash with a little bit of grey and I think just to highlight it. But yeah, just really nicely done. Uh, the body itself is obviously based on three doctors, so you've got the waistcoat, all the lines coming down, uh, going the grey lines and the white shirt with the black buttons. Got the monocle there, which uh, doesn't really look too see-through. Uh, it just looks very white, probably my only complaint with this figure. You've got the black cravat with the uh, necktie. And not a necktie. With the shirt slightly folded, but not too much, as it was in that story. And then you've got the actual coat itself, which is very nicely done, actually. Uh, there are all the um, different creases and whatnot, and buttons, and pockets. Uh, they're not The, the pockets don't look full at all, because... Uh, Hartnell never really did anything with these pockets. We've got all the detail. We've got a bit of glue there, which I'm annoyed about, which I still haven't managed to remove, and I've had this set for a, such a long time. Buttons and all that. And the trousers are just a plain grey with the brown loafers, which uh, I've got had detail taken off them um, from the San Diego Comic Con versions. But yeah, that's the first Doctor figure. Uh, pretty good start. Uh, none of these figures are really that bad, it's just the Sylvester McCoy one's got a few problems and yeah my cane's getting quite knackered anyway let's move on to the second doctor which is from the same story so like i said he's from the three doctors uh, the articulation is i uh, is the exact same to william arnold so i'm not going to go over that, that again uh so the detail wise well let's zoom in at the face so his face is very reminiscent of patrick Troughton. Uh, with the little bits of red around the eyes, opposed to the black that was on the uh, Troughton from his era ones. With the black hair, which is just, again just black, we've got the blue eyes and everything else there. We've got the neck with, uh, I, I believe the Adam's apple is sculpted there, it's hard to see. We've got the black coat with all the with lots of creases and stuff in his pockets. This is where the Doctor really started to have pockets uh, with things in. Uh, we've got the bow tie with the speckered dots on, we've got the blue shirt with the white uh, sort of buttons what well, lost my words there and then he also comes with an accessory his recorder which is played in the story uh, he plays this a lot in the power of the daleks and then of course it happens in this story i don't like how the tassels are there i would prefer them going all the way down so it looked like when he's playing it he was actually playing it because i didn't know what this was when i originally got this set years ago now uh but yeah we've got a bit of paint bleed there, giving it to not very good focus, but I'm doing my best. But yeah, it's quite a nice little thing. Uh, the trousers as well do have a checkered pattern on, as you can see. It's very nice. We do have a little button on the trousers, just there, which is a good, nice attention to detail. But yeah, then we've got the shoes, which I've got, which are very nice. I don't actually these shoes. 
got like, they've got a very glo a nice gloss to them with different shades of brown. Uh, yeah, they do look very reminiscent to Petra Trouton's shoes. And yeah, uh, all in all, the Petra Trouton figures are pretty good. Uh, I'm not really going into too much detail about the Trouton figure because there isn't really much too much too much to tell with him. Uh, he's He's quite a basic figure. Uh, the sculpt is just probably the best thing about it. It is really nice. And yeah, it just captures Trout. And of course, we've got the uh, handkerchief there, which is uh, what is normally red in the actual Trout ones, but it changed. But yeah, I uh, wish I had the 13 Doctor set because then I have half the third Doctor from the story. Anyway, speaking of the third Doctor, that's what we're going to move on to. So here he is Pertwee, the, my favourite Doctor. Uh, so, articulation is the same, except for, uh, oh, no, I'm wrong, I thought there was a, a boot articulation, there isn't, so the articulation is, once again, the exact same. We'll quickly go over Pertwee's Sonic Screwdriver, because I don't believe I've done that yet, uh, properly. Stay. So, the Sonic Screwdriver is a, uh, isn't actually the same sculpt as any, any of the others, this is a, it's a one-off sculpt. And it is the worst sculpt because it's not fat enough and it never fits in Pertwee's hand. It always slips out. And it's always annoying me with this and will that forever will. Uh, Detail-wise, it's really good. It's, uh, it does have two lines, par of three, uh, which is better than the actual original release, which had four for some reason. Uh, but yeah, it's not bad. Uh, they've got the red kind of right and the black. It's not a bad accessory, but it's just too bloody thin. But yeah. So, this Pertwee figure is based off the Carnival of Monsters, one of Robert Holmes' greatest stories. Uh, the face sculpt of the Pertwee figure is bang on Pertwee. It really does look like him. Other than the eyes, which are a bit dodgy, it does look a lot like John Pertwee. The hair has got little grey highlights in. Uh, not to show oldness, just to show his hair. Uh, I think if they ever did a season 7 figure, they'd need a few blonde highlights in. They're just very, very slight, subtle sort of golden as he did have but yeah that's quite nice the uh, cravat and everything is nicely done with all the correct colours and of course this is one of the uh, Pertwee sculpts where it actually fits the um, on screen appearance as this is what it was sculpted for with the frills at the bottom of the, of the hand of the uh, arms with uh, each hand positioned in certain ways we have the one for the Sonic and the one with his ring like so we've got the buttons underneath yeah, generally it's just a really nice figure. Uh, we've got the legs, which have got the black boots, which have no shades on, and the trousers, which are grey. Now, with uh, with like its counterpart figure, the Sea Devil figure, its ca uh, cape is removable, which I will do now. So yeah, the cape is removable, and he looks really uh, nice without it. Uh, this is how I display him on my shelf. I don't like having the cape on. Maybe because I've had it on for years, and I never really used to take it off because it used to be too much of a hassle, but now I've got the hang of it. Uh, but yeah, so that's the Pertwee figure. So now... Let's look at uh, the Tom Baker one, which is a, it's a uh, this is probably, uh, this is my favourite costume of Tom Baker's. It is, of course, the season 13, uh, sort of the latter half of season 13, so the Android invasion to the Seeds of Doom. Uh, he never really wears it after that, um, uh, from what I can remember. Uh, he might wear a symbol, similar one in season 15, possibly. But I don't think he does. But yeah, this is my favourite Tom Baker costume. If I ever get some form of Tom Baker costume, this would be the one. Uh, I just think it's so simple, um, yet the, so effective. Uh, uh, it does have a sonic screwdriver, which I've gone over in my other Fourth Doctor figure reviews. But it does have a new head sculpt. Uh, I do believe that the head is removable. Hold on. Like I said, the head is removable, and as you can see, it is uh, a more solemn looking Tom with a hat. Of course, there's his green hat. Um, it's a very, very uh, light shade of green. It should have been a bit darker, uh, really. Uh, but it still suits the Tom figure. Uh, I do prefer the... I've always thought he looks a bit sad in this expression. I would have preferred a uh, sort of... More sort of um, speaking look of Tom. Just a very simple one. Uh, but it's still, I guess, it kind of works. The scarf is, of course... Uh, just a normal scarf. This is slightly different, I think, or it might, might be the same. Uh, but of course, you know, it, the scarf did change slightly in season 13. Now we'll look at the body, the headless body. Uh, of course, the, or the, the 
shirt is up as it was in that and that's uh, those episodes we have the cravat the red cravat with the uh, the nice waistcoat which has the but gray and orange and yellow with the brown buttons very nice the coat which is my favorite tom baker coat uh just looks really nicely done we've got the night it's got a very very nice effect on it which gives it a good very good look like the black dots at the back which of course he had um and yeah we've got the shoulder pad things we've got the arms of course he's holding like i said before he's showing a screwdriver very very nicely done we've got the gray trousers and then of course the shoes which are just really nicely done um you don't really get much better than this for a Tom Baker figure. And yeah, so let's have a look at him with all this stuff together. So this Baker figure is, like I said, my favourite. Um, I'd love to get the Caesar Doom set to have another version of it, uh, which I don't think there's any difference, but still. Yeah, of course, he's from uh, some of my favourite Tom Baker stories, like uh, the Caesar Doom and the Brain of Morbius. And yeah, it's a very nice addition to the set. This is his first release in this form, and it is, yeah, like I said, re-releasing the Caesar Doom set. But yeah, let's look at it now. My brother's favourite Doctor, Peter Davison. The fifth doctor now again the articulation is the exact same uh same for tom as well and yeah now i this uh for, for when i got this was the first time i'd seen celery on a peter davison figure even though i know uh i think san diego comic con was the first time he was released with celery but yeah this has already happened but for me it hadn't so this is uh pretty much a re-release figure this was uh i don't believe we, they'd had this complete variant but we'd had all the variants. Um, of course, now we have the, we've had this figure many a time, really. And yeah, so there's nothing really special about it. Uh, but I'll, I haven't reviewed a Fifth Doctor figure properly yet, so let's do it. So, first of all, the face sculpt. The face sculpt is amazing, really. This is probably one of my, like I said, one of the best likenesses. I think it really is like Peter Davison. He's going for the bit shorter hair, so the sort of, uh, not Fourth of Doomsday look, but certainly a sort of, um, title sequence look um if you don't know peter davison's hair goes sometimes long sometimes short i mean if you watch fourth of doomsday which is the first one they ever recorded uh, his hair is really really short it is quite hilarious yeah, of course we got the blondie brandy brown blondie brown hair the blondie brown uh, uh um, i can't even speak eyebrows which are very 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 nice we've got the red lips uh we've got the coat but before we do the coat we'll do the jumper now I am not the king of knowing what uh, the jumpers are. I'm pretty sure that the season 19 one had something at the bottom. Season 20 though, I have not a clue. Um, yeah, so I'm not um, entirely sure if this jumper's correct. Some it's telling me there should be some at the bottom, and I believe there should be. Uh, of course, we've got the red button though, and the uh, red innards of the coat uh, the coat the shirt with the question marks on it though we've got the celery which it looks more like a tree really rather than celery uh, although there has been uh, there is a nice paint job of it on the 13 doctors one which is probably the best one we've ever had of it and i'm quite happy, quite happy to get that all the red in that is very nice it's done to outline the coat of the cream uh, yes yeah, that's my favorite fifth doctor figure as uh i don't know but season 19 is probably my favorite season of the fifth doctor We've got the, uh, so I don't know what you'd call them, trousers, but yeah, those trousers. Uh, we've got the green with the rip, smaller red line on the cream. Uh, yeah, very cream costume, Peter Davison, very bland. Uh, some people would argue his doctor is, but I don't think so. We've got clean trainers, which uh, is, is very, um, you don't always see on Fifth Doctor figures. Sometimes they're a bit dirty. Well, these are slightly dirty, but I think that's forced dirt from years of play, really. Uh, yeah, that's the Fifth Doctor one. Uh, we'll go over his sonic screwdriver quickly. Of course, this, well, this technically, if you're going to be pedantic, has to be season 19 up to the visitation. But yeah, uh, if we get Tom Baker's, because I believe it, they are identical. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so this is Tom Baker's, this is Peter Davison's. Peter Davison says gold, where Tom Baker Tom Baker says black. And has some black on the ends for some reason. But yeah, I believe, and, that is, and they are the exact same sculpt. So, that's the fifth Doctor figure. So let's have a quick little look at him. So this is probably one of the be uh, probably the best fifth Doctor figure. Uh, got salary, season nineteen gear, just uh, probably the favourite version of the Peter Davison costume. Although I do quite like uh, the season twenty in the hat. I'm not a fan of the season nineteen in the hat because I feel like I don't know why, but season twenty in the hat, uh, which is available in the Resurrection of the Daleks two pack, uh, something I really want to get. But yeah, now let's move on to the Terror of the Vervoids sixth Doctor. Now I've not yet watched Survivor Time all, all the way through. Uh, I keep trying to watch it. Mysterious Planet 
is just boring me to death, so I can't be arsed with it. But I've watched, uh, looked at some photos, and it looks pretty good. So this isn't a full fledged, but yeah, the cat badge of course is on the other uh, other side with the stars on the um, neck the tie thing. We have the brightly coloured waistcoat. We've got the green pocket watch. All the colours have been really nicely done and applied. Although this blue should be a bit lighter. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, we've got the trousers uh, with the black lines, the green and the red. And yeah, just a really nice figure. We've got, of course, the hand to be holding absolutely nothing. And the other hand to hold absolutely nothing. A bit of colour wear there. But yeah, just a really nice figure. Yeah, I really quite like it. The face sculpt is really nicely presented on the Sixth Doctor here. Uh, it's very crisp and clean. Uh, we've got the, uh, a very weird sort of hurt looking hair. I mean, this should be really more his bouffon, which he had in his late se later season. Uh, but yeah, we've got the blonde highlights. And he does look like a Sith Doctor from Terror of the Vervoids. Just, yeah, I mean, personally, I don't know, what what more can you... I mean, I would have preferred a... Well, I guess they did. this is all they could have did. I would have preferred more versions of Sith Doctor there for us to have by now. We only really, screen-wise, we only have two. Which is annoying, really, because he did wear a few different ones in Trial of Time Lord, and it only has just different paint jobs. Which, you know, hey, what can you do? But yeah, I would have loved them to release more Sixth Doctors. It really was an unused Doctor variant. Although we did get the regeneration figure, which not all of them got. Uh, I would have quite liked to have seen a Sylvester McCoy regeneration figure. But then again, I guess, technically... Uh, well, no, yeah. But yeah, anyway. Now let's move on, speaking of Sylvester McCoy, to Sylvester McCoy. We're going to put his umbrella on there. Uh, please ignore the shouting. My brother is being a bit of a kit, uh, dick. Anyway, so the seventh Doctor figure. Uh, this is where the most inaccuracies are. I'm just. I'm not going to put them all out. I'm just going to circle this area here, and that's where the inaccuracies are, uh, especially the pocket watch, which has been rectified though on the latest release of this figure. Uh, the trousers are very nicely done. Um, obviously, this is season twenty-six. Uh, the trousers are, re are really nice. Actually, I think the, uh, the paint job is superb. The shoes are very Tom Baker-esque, although he's got smaller feet as he is. A bit of a hobbit and a dwarf. Uh, that's good. It's not, it, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we've got his hands, which are uh, probably the most interesting Doctor hands. As of course, he'd never hold a sonic screwdriver until the TV movie. So Mr. McCoy doesn't need the hand which all Doctors before him have and after him. Uh, I think Hartnell even, yeah, Hartnell even has it. So yeah, so uh, that was an interesting doctor. I don't quite know why a heart, well I guess for the cane, but yeah, uh, the, hold on. So yeah, anyway, we'll let's look at the brolly now. So the brolly is very nicely sculpted, it's a very bendy plastic at the top. Um, I have started to try and remould this because uh, yeah, I'd put it in his hand in a weird position and it had like gone sort of like that and it was annoying me. But yeah, I'm trying, um, of course, it would have been nice if it went a bit thinner here, so it looked more like the question mark. I quite like the question mark idea that John J and T had. But yeah, it is moulded in a completely red plastic, as you can see. There is bits of red seeping through this. Yeah, around here, there. So yeah, so uh, but the, the gloss I believe is added after. And um, we have the spike. It would have been nice if this was a bit harder, so we could actually stick into things. Although it kind of can. If I demonstrate. There. As he did in a few uh, uh, parts and episodes, but yeah, um, I think what we're gonna do for the for the rest of the reviews is have it hanging just there. On, can you see? Yeah, there. It's kind of hiding. But yeah, anyway, uh, the seventh figure. Uh, of course, we've got the uh, question marks on the jumper and all this other hula blue, and we've got the head, which is again. Very nice. Uh, you could boil and pop and try and, and give him the hat, although the hatted version is technically exclusive to the TARDIS of, of Swiss McCoy. But yeah, not really much more to say. Nice creases and that on the, ja the jacket. Yeah, quite a nice figure, I guess. Now, finally, uh, the only figure of this, the only variant of this figure, which I ever want to get because I don't care about the comics and I'm just not bothered about Night of the Doctor. The Paul McGann figure. So, of course, it's based on his TV movie outfit. Which is the only outfit he has for me, really. I mean, I haven't listened to any big finish yet. So, yeah, for me, this is the only 8th Doctor one. As for the TV movie, quickly, mm, it's alright. I don't mind it. Uh, the 8th Doctor, I just want to say, is on a peg. Haven't got a clue why. I don't know whether this is a reused figure. But yeah, the Edwardian look suits it. We'll have a look at the head sculpt in a minute. 
You have got the green jacket uh, with, the little, with the little line buttons there. Stop, uh, pocket watch, sort of tinted slightly green legs, slightly. And we got the glossy shoes, which fit perfectly. And here we have the, the head. Now it look it does look like Paul McGann to me. Uh, the hair does, the eyes kind of do, the mouth just doesn't do it for me. This is a very, this is the weakest sculptor, I think, to the point where it's not even displayed on my actual shelf, which it probably should be really, but still. That's the Paul McGann figure, so let's sum up this set. So on a whole, this is a very good set. If you can track this down for cheap money, can't imagine you can. Um, I can imagine it is, it is worth it, really. The fourth Doctor figure is probably my favourite. Uh, the third, I do quite like the third and fifth ones, though. Even though the fifth one's pretty much the re-release on it, I still quite like it. It's my only version of him, is really the main reason. Uh, then the second, first, seventh, sixth and eighth are still really good figures. The weakest figure is probably, for me, um, maybe the sixth, only because it's just a repaint and that, and I've, you know, haven't really actually even seen the story, which I know probably should have by now, but hey, I do have the DVD. I will get around to watch it drive the time, I will watch it in order. And I think I'm going to hit forever hate the Mysterious Planet. So, you know, I'll get there eventually. But yeah, I'll see you on the next one, guys. Please do subscribe and like for more daily Doctor Who related content. And if you made it this far in the video, uh, well done to you. Because you are a true fan. And I salute you. And I hope you keep enjoying my content. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.